Google and its partners have committed $100 million to a broadband penetration project in Africa called C Squared. The initiative is an extension of Project Link, a similar program introduced in Uganda in 2013 and later in Ghana. The whole idea of the project is to provide access to more efficient broadband infrastructure so as to enable 4G internet access across Africa, including setting up Wi-Fi zones. Graphic Online speaks to Google Ghana Country Manager, Estella Kofi Osowa, for her to tell us what C Squared is all about. I'm Estelle Akofioso, I'm the country lead, and Samuel is my CTO. Okay. okay. Um, so it's all about the speed of light, MC squared. Um, so it's about this, you know, speed of light, so it's the speed of our service. Uh, like Einstein, the team behind the business are brilliant, um, you know, and it, it's, a, it's sort of a fun name. So uh, Google launched Project Link in 2013. Um, and really it was as a result of, we, you know, we've had the offices across Africa now for about uh, almost nine years, right? So we've looked at what were the access barriers, what stopped someone coming online. We looked at uh, relevance. So when someone came online, would they find relevant content and products? We looked at uh, sustainability. So that was all our engagement, training, community outreach, building the developer community, etc. But after all of that, we really felt that the biggest challenge that Africa was facing was access. And that the piece that was missing was uh, the, the infrastructure to move the internet from the coast. For example, in Ghana, we have five undersea cables that land. I believe we use about 20% of the capacity that lands. The lack of infrastructure to move it from the landing stations to our towers, to the new estates that are coming up, to large office buildings like this, um, or any point where a, a large pipe of internet um, is needed. And so that was what birthed the idea of Project Link, to be a wholesale infrastructure uh, player. And that's very key for us, the wholesale piece. So we don't serve the end user, and we think there's enough uh, options, suppliers, providers in the markets now that that isn't the space that we should play in, but rather in enabling the providers to deliver their service to their customers, which is the end user. So the license that we actually applied for in, like, in Uganda and in Ghana is for a wholesale license. So by our license, we are only allowed to serve licensed entities, mobile operators and ISPs, or, or any other entity that the regulator licenses. So they must be licensed by the regulator. Um, so Uganda was our first market, Ghana was our second, and Ni Liberia is the next market. And it's really a sustainable business. So that's also important for us is that this isn't a philanthropic venture of Google. This is a business that is set up and it's a sustainable business based on, um, you know, um, sharing of infrastructure, uh, allowing them to improve their quality of service, reducing their costs, so that they can focus really on their end user, their customer service, what differentiates them um, in the market. Uh, and then the fact, explain a little bit about the, the other investors that are coming on board. So they're co-investing in C squared. Um, and yeah, answer any questions that you might have. Um, we totally know that what we're doing doesn't solve every issue. And in different parts of a country, you need a different technology. We're focused on high-density urban cities, where dense metro networks is what is needed. There are other things that you will need in different parts. And you know, the last one, Google has been, uh, you might have heard of Project Loon, the balloons uh, up in the air. So um, you know, different technologies, but what uh, Project Link and C Squared are focused on is the high density uh, urban areas. Um, so why shared infrastructure, you know? And to non-technical people, I like to compare it to a road network. We don't all have our own road to take us to graphic, yeah. right? We share infrastructure, we share electricity, we share water. But with internet, I think because it's more been driven by private entities, the telcos primarily, they've typically been building for their own needs. And in some cases, they've been able to share, 
But that's also been difficult where you're sharing with a com uh, competitor. Um, so again, that's why it's important for us by our license that we're very clear to our customers, we will not be competing with you. We are working with you. When you get a customer, an end user, that means we're getting an order from you. It's a win-win um, situation. Infrastructure is very capex intensive. And I think the days are passing where everyone just had <laughs> unlimited pots of money to build infrastructure. So again, sharing makes sense. It's also better for the environment. Instead of everyone digging up and, uh, and so on, it makes sense for you, you, you build uh, with a capacity to serve the country's needs. Why do we find this exciting? Because it really, we think for any new, large modern city, you need, it's like this sort of infrastructure is a basic requirement that a modern city needs. And it can enable so many things. You can manage traffic lights uh, remotely, you know, so that you can manage traffic flow. When you talk about security, you can have improved security with cameras around. It's an important thing for everyone. Managing electricity, again, remotely, um, so that you can manage uh, grids, etc. So it really it improves, reduces costs of running a city if these, this infrastructure becomes part of how a government runs the city. So what have we done uh, to date? Um, and so this slide here just gives you a little bit of information about the technology and Samuel here with me is our CTO, uh, so if you have more questions about that. But it's really been about building a resilient and robust network. Mm -hmm. So we've invested a lot in the infrastructure and the architecture behind our network that allows us to have the confidence to say, to give the SLAs that we're giving to our customers who will then pass it on to their um, end users. So we have our, it's a mesh network, MPLS network. Uh, we have multiple um, hub sites that give us that redundancy. Each hub site has three access points. So if there's a fiber cut on one, we have another two routes that we can take. Um, each of our customers is also on their own dedicated core. So again, they're not sharing with another provider. So all these layers really give us the confidence that we can deliver on the SLAs that we're committed to. Uganda was the first country, and we've done over 900 kilometers in Uganda. Um, they've got over a 1,000 sites now that are live in uh, Uganda. For us, a site is, whether it's a tower or a building, uh, wherever we terminate the fiber. And we can build to wherever our customer wants us to go within the metro that we're operating. So we build the core network, then we receive an order from a, from a service provider saying that they, uh, they've got graphic as a customer. Um, and so they want to build fiber off our core network into the graphic, and we would uh, do that. Most of the mobile operators and ISPs in Uganda are on our network um, as well. So this is a C-squared network in Ghana. Right, and we're doing Accra, Tema, and Kumasi. Um, and most of what you're seeing here actually today has, uh, is already built. So in fact, this is the built network. And indeed, uh, Samuel, I believe this 650 is even yes, yeah. low now, right? Yeah, it's, it's, now. it's, what is it now yeah, in Accra, Tema? Right, so, it's, yeah. it's, so we're constantly building uh, on the network. So you can see how it's dense. I like to, again, with a road network comparison, it's like we're ur the urban roads, yeah. right? We're not the highways, although it, uh, in some instances we do go along a highway. We are not intercity as well, right? We're not about connecting Accra and Kumasi. Again, we felt that there was enough options doing that. It's an area we're still uh, looking at. And Kumasi is a little smaller, uh, but is also growing in density. So these are some of our customers um, that we've got on the network uh, today. So, you know, you can see our a range of telcos, the LTE, the ISPs as well. And what does it mean? You know, with the network that we're building, if someone has a license, right, they can come into the market and go to uh, market much quicker because the network already exists. So it allows quicker rollout once you've got your license um, or expansion if you're an existing uh, provider, as well as improving their core, their core network. So, the announcement that we made. We've been doing this. Samuel, when did you start digging in Ghana? In 2016? Uh, 19th June. 2015. 
um, was when we started uh, digging. We've been doing a lot of it quietly. We had a small launch event, um, but really we wanted to build the network and get our customers on board, etc. And so uh, Ghana and, Liber and Uganda, sorry, have proven that they're models that work. And Google's been looking for other partners to come on board that are also committed to building infrastructure on the continent. Um, work. Some, in some cases, are even closer to the continent than Google is, um, and um, bring that expertise to the business. And there was the, the, the Google's done this in multiple instances where Google incubates an idea or a new a young venture, and then allows it to go out, and it actually performs better as an independent entity than continuing to be within the Google uh, in, uh, within the Google uh, company. So we found the ideal partners in the IFC, um, which is an international finance corporation, Mitsui, which is a Japanese investment firm, and Convergence Partners, which is a South Africa-based equity investment uh, partner. They've all been already investing in infrastructure uh, over the years, so it's something they've been doing. They're all very committed to shared infrastructure. So one of the key messages we are wanting to, to share is that our focus is not changing. It's still about being wholesale and building shared infrastructure. Um, and uh, all of this really is to allow C-Square to be an independent company and operate more efficiently, but with the financial backing to go on and do other markets. And on an earlier slide, you heard me mention Liberia being our next market. Uh, that's really interesting for us uh, because there's another component that USAID are funding uh, to really help drive the e-Liberia, the e-governance strategy in Liberia. So we'll be connecting a lot of government sites, but alongside there's additional funding outside of, of our program to equip these government agencies and give them the capacity skill set as well to use um, the internet. I think the demand is so high, we don't need a winner, we just need everyone to push it. So, you know, I think that's that's what's important. and. You know, like one of my slides said, I don't think there's one solution um, to the problem. And as we're tapping into and, you know, trying to address the issues in Accra, Tam and Kumasi, the, really there's the whole, the whole nation is there as well. So there's so much to be done um, that I think it doesn't, uh, I wouldn't focus on who's winning, but who's doing things that actually um, have results. Great question and a tough question, right, uh, to answer. And we, we obviously don't have the regulatory ability to, to force. Um, and we've just come through a couple years now where anyone running a business, and in particular the technology businesses, we're having to incur higher costs around electricity, etc. You know, I think as customers, we can definitely say we have more choice. There is, um, and more movement, you know, now you can move around with your internet service much better. Um, and there, there has been some improvement in speed, you know, and we're looking for more improvement in, in the cost aspect. It will come over time. I think we, we need to be patient and we need, need to look at addressing all the challenges that the service providers face and not just um, this this first one. So, so when you come to us, the first thing we're going to check is, you know, do you have a license? Because we don't want to get in trouble with NCA and we want to stay true to our principles. So do you have a license? And then we'll have a discussion with you about what, your, what technology are you going to be using to serve your end users? Uh, what areas in Accra, Tema and Kumasi are you focused on? You know, what type of customer? So is it large enterprises? Is it an estate? Is it the SME market? Who is it that you're targeting? Um, and then once we've understood that and we've agreed on pricing, we've signed our contract, um, you would simply place orders and you would tell us you want to deliver service to graphic. That's your first order. I'm giving you that order first. <laughs> <laughs> because I want to build fiber into graphic. Um, so you would place that order and Samuel and his team would then build the fiber to the location that you had submitted the order to. Of course, we would have to get right of way, so working with uh, urban roads or whichever relevant road authority for the section of road you want us to build on. Um, and you would have to get us the permission to build within the premises of graphic, since we are talking hypothetically. 
Um, and then it would, the service would come on. Yeah, so now I don't know whether to put my Ghanaian hat or my C-squared hat on. So I look forward to more cities in Ghana justifying the investment of a dense metro fiber network. But it does, it is a commercial venture. Um, and you know, so that's, that's the future. When we started off in Uganda, we did Kampala only. And we extended to Entebbe. And we're looking at the next uh, cities to do. In Ghana, we started off with three cities from the beginning. But not only expanding into new cities, but even within the cities we are in, looking at what other infrastructure can be shared, what other technologies can we use to expand our reach beyond the base stations and the large enterprises? How can we get fiber uh, right down into the SME? So there's lots of layering um, even within the cities that we're in that we can do. With, uh, with any merger or uh, change in ownership structure like this, you have to get final approval from the regulators, right? So they're bringing the financial uh, investment, obviously, and then their, their management uh, capabilities as well. Their relationships in the market, they've been operating in, uh, in Africa for many years, so they also bring um, additional relations and sort of smart partners. So they're strategic partners as well as financial partners. So, well, I guess the fact that the, these investors are coming on board uh, and that we're expanding into new markets is testimony to the fact that uh, C Squared Project Link has been a successful uh, venture. And uh, well, none of our customers are here today, but I think if you were to speak to any of our customers as well, I think that they would give a good testimony to the success of um, the technology that we're building, you know, and the quality of the network that we're building. Um, so, Samuel, <laughs> it's not an easy task, you know, and it's very operationally intensive. Um, so, but we've been worked very well with Urban Roads, uh, Ghana Highway Authority. Um, one of the challenges, though, is knowing what exists in the ground today. And there's definitely room for improvement around managing that data and information. Um, and then as there's more roadworks going on, better coordination. Um, and we've already seen some meetings that the NCA has been organizing this year already to coordinate that better. Um, and then just, just really better sharing and managing of that information around the infrastructure that exists so that there's less fiber cuts, which are very expensive to go and fix, and obviously they have an impact on the, the service uh, quality. Google has the confidence that once you come online, you will find the best product for you, whatever that product is. And that's been a, that's been a commitment for, from Google from the beginning. It's really a commitment around bringing people online and um, you know getting them to benefit from the internet. So really we looked at where the product we were rolling out met the needs of particular cities and also where the regulatory environment enabled us to do this business uh, fairly easily. So Uganda was also chosen as the first market because it wasn't so large. It was our first market. We wanted to test out our capabilities in building the network and so on. Um, and then once we got wind of it, there was no choice. The next country had to be Ghana. Um, so, you know, I think that by building the networks we're building, um, by enabling the service providers to roll out a quali good quality of service at lower costs, um, you know, that then enables them. I think we should be asking our customers, <laughs> when will they be offering free uh, internet service? Yeah. yeah and, um, you heard it all. The business community out there, this is a great opportunity to tap into. Thank you.